Hey guys, we're in front of the Olympia Theater to see the Van Gogh art here. Our mom just dragged us here. Um, let's see if it's worth coming in. Yeah, we'll tell you at the end of the video if it's worth it. We're in the Olympia Theater. And yeah, you didn't say downtown Miami. So downtown Miami. It's Sunday night. No school tomorrow. The Dolphins won. Dolphins won. won yesterday. It's a good day. again and again. In Starry Night, Van Gogh puts style front and center, a post-impressionistic masterpiece. The curved lines are meant to bounce our eyes between the stars. But a closer look reveals that the painting is composed of short, sharp brushstrokes, so that, in his words, their lines are contorted like those of ancient woodcuts. What makes Van Gogh, and in this case, his Starry Night unique? The answer, of course, is the way uses colour. Van Gogh's Starry Night contrasts the darkness of the village where only a few window panes of light can be seen with the swirling brightness of the night sky. And jutting between these two juxtaposed worlds is the irredeemably dark cypress tree, a plant traditionally associated with mourning. Now Van Gogh was confined to a mental institution near saint Remy when he composed this painting. Given only a small room to work in, he had to paint from memory and scraps of his earlier work. So far removed from the immediate experience of painting on location that he was used to, a year later, Van Gogh would be dead by his own hand. Perhaps the village, like Saint Remy, might appear calm and welcoming, a refuge from the turbulent chaos of the wild night sky. Or maybe it's the other way around. The darkness of the village echoes the closeness of his little room and the claustrophobia of his depression, whilst the sky reminds us of the brilliant light of the universe and a greater meaning shining down upon us. This certainly makes some sense compared to Van Gogh's earlier attempt at capturing the night sky. In Starry Night Over the Road, the lights of the stars are somewhat dim, compared to the brightness of the man-made light which reflects across the river. Here, Van Gogh prizes the brightness of mankind. In Starry Night, however, the lightness of life in the village has faded for him, to be replaced by the quasi-spiritual lights of the moon and stars. Van Gogh retreats from the world. But whichever interpretation you take, the gloomy cypress tree pierces both realities, and is inescapable. It spears both the calmness and the chaos, both the darkness of the night and the night's brilliant colour. But it also connects them and binds them together. For me, Van Gogh's painting is the most wonderful interpretation of human suffering into something beautiful and perhaps beyond the frame of words. Yet it can be framed by colour, and composition, and no one uses colour in a more impressive and confounding way than Vincent van Gogh. But to say that simply his use of colour is what makes van Gogh unique is to miss the most important point. It seems that van Gogh was colourblind. Casanoria Sada, an expert in colour vision, put the picture in a special colour vision experience room and found that Van Gogh's slightly odd use of colour disappeared and congruity was achieved. Van Gogh, it seems, used colour so brightly because he saw fewer colours than most. In this canvas of human suffering and resounding hope, 
Van Gogh uses bright colours because he could not see the distinctions between closer ones. His limitations themselves freed him to create beauty. Perhaps what makes Van Gogh unique was that he genuinely saw the world differently. In fact, he saw the world like this. Sweet dreams. Maybe this was his room, the one that they put him in. Remember? Remember the room that they said that he has when he was taken to the hotel? I think so, yeah. That was his room. Look, guys, in here. Brandon. The bedroom. Still, that's the one that we just saw. This. Look, another quote. Paintings have a life of their own that originates in the painter's soul. Go lay down. Go. Go lay down with Brandon.
this is cool. You know. To make sketches is to plant seeds from which paintings grow. Do you like this? You gonna be an artist when you grow up? Paintings have a life of their own that originate. The painters. The painters, so. Oh, so beautiful. Look how pretty this is, Mom. Let me fix it. Brandon, look at what you're missing. Yes. Uh, I saw it. Look, that's the one Dylan likes, the sunflower one. And it looks like a dragon, right? Stop. But that's the painting Dylan likes. There it is, it's coming though.
my mind in the process. Yes, friend. Look how cool how the floor has raindrops. Okay, hold it gently. Look, bottom left corner, there's your painting. Oh, bottom right corner. You see it though? Put your painting there and press the button. Press, no, hold it down and press it gently. Hold it. Look, it's on the top, you see it? Top. Look, it came out twice. We had really fun, but my favorite part was drawing. Drawing? Yeah, they had a drawing thing at the end, but my favorite part is right before the drawing area. There's like this little area where there's like a projector and it's a huge little. Room. A huge, huge area. I said. Where it's projected it's like, in the entire room. Yeah, like the entire wall. And, and they have little uh, um, pillows there uh, and, and mats so you can lay down. Yeah. So and if you're in the Miami the area, you okay. should definitely come. Mom, it was really cold in there. Mom drew this. Your mom, the artist. Yes. And then do you want to show you? Yeah. And now we're gonna go to eat. See you.